October 25th is right around the corner, and we actually have the release of some new starter decks. So I'm gonna keep it a stack. I'm I don't even need to keep it a stack, right? We're all sick of this format, bro. Like we all went to some of us went to nationals. We've been playing since OPO7. We're in OPO8. It's basically the same stuff. We need something new, man. So I'm really excited for this new starter deck. So the new starter decks, it's six new starter decks, by the way. So today we're going to be looking at the various starter decks and we're going to be talking about the ones that I think are the best and you should definitely pick up. So this is just the release schedule for the starter decks here. For those of you all who don't know, we have starters for red. We got starters for green, blue, purple, black, yellow, pretty much just all other colors here. Is there a missing color? I don't think there is. I think this is all the colors in the game right now. So let's go ahead and look at the first starter deck. So the first starter deck we're going to be looking at is the red starter deck. And I did have it clicked. I think this is by far the craziest new card. We'll look at the other new cards, but this card's really insane. So it's on play. Give up to one of your rested down cards to your leader or your uh your characters or one of your characters, right? And then activate main. You may rest this character. Kill up to one of your opponent's characters with 5,000 power or less. So if we combo this with uh the Marco leader, which let me pull this up. If we combo this with the Marco leader, that means we can pop like 7K power units on curve which is really insane and we actually got this new 2k which also does another minus 2k so matter of fact if like let's say we're, we go against black we go second they play jack on seven or whatever we can actually play this new gate attach it on play this thatch bam all of a sudden we're killing jack so it's very very neat like this is this is kind of just a neat card it's like red versions it's like red's version of jack um but this is like the strongest card out of these new cards. So I think the other big card to mention here is Ace, which is just it has Rush. And then when it would be removed by an effect, you can give it minus 2K. So it's kind of like decent against Black. But obviously, like if it's rested, it's really easy to clear 4K power unit. But like this, I don't know, this package just feels pretty like lackluster right now. Like this is a little neat. Like sure, you give, you're give giving Whitebeard like some extra life. But Doc Flamingo is going to be one of the craziest decks. And that just seems like it just pounds on whitebeard right like yo like we're calling like five bodies by like our like third turn or whatever right so whitebeard's probably just gonna get um rushed down right or at least or at least that's what i expect maybe i'm wrong that's what i expect but red's package is just looking a little rough like we have this red jack here but the marco deck is just i'm pretty sure it's just worse at removal than black and then like the aggro package by having like ace having rush and stuff like that it's just not cutting it right now like do flamingo does aggro better than red and then black does removal better than marco does with like jack and stuff so i don't know rush is kind of in a weird position right now but they do have like a lot of good cards i feel like this is a really strong card i feel like this card is pretty decent uh this is just another minus 2k which is nice maybe with some more support in the future we could really be seeing um some sauce with red but this might be like i don't know this is crazy to say but this is kind of one of my least favorite uh starters right now probably my least favorite out of the six to be honest maybe one uh maybe come opo 9 support it's going to be looking a little better but i'm not i'm not too gassed on it right now to be honest but this card is really nuts like if you play marco i feel like this is the card maybe i'm hating on marco maybe marco is better than i think it is right now i just kind of view it as a worse black maybe it's not so uh, maybe that's something i need to actually test some more so let me know in the comments below if i'm tripping or not but next starter green so this start is also very interesting because the majority of it is mid but it has a really really good card so the key card here is shanks and i think for shanks alone you guys got to pick this up like if you play bonnie or you play any sort of green i think you're gonna have to pick up the starter deck just for shanks alone green finally has removal this is probably the one thing green has been clacking like the most right like this is on play coach one of your opponent's rest of characters like if your opponent played like an isha or something they, they would just have an E-show. They're swinging 10K with it the whole game. You just can't do anything about it, man. But with this Shanks, we can finally remove that E-show. They no longer have that minus three and stuff. It's just very, very nice to see this deck with removal. And I think a card like this will allow green to really stay in the meta in the future, right? Because, like, cards are only getting stronger and stronger. We're seeing all these very strong effects, like E-show, for instance, Jack, all of that. Even uh, the new gate we just looked at, right? Like, this new gate is just popping stuff for free. So green finally having, like, a solid removal card to clear those units is just so so strong uh as for the rest of the starter we have some other like just kind of nice cards here like we have this katakuri this is going to be quite strong in utah right because um uh 6k base unit and it's only three costs which means you can play it off of uh film brook which is very nice which uh for those of y'all who don't know i guess because y'all might be some of y'all might be out the loop this is film brook here that would be played in the uh utah leader which i believe the utah leader is actually here uh this is basically just like a draw one every turn, but your whole deck has to be foam, so it's a bit weird. Um, but so this is just a nice quality of life card. Um, 
this card is like like probably not that good because realistically it won't stick but if we if this card could stick it would be kind of sick because uh all of these songs like all of these music cards none of them have counters so being able to discard them is actually very very nice uh then we have this utah here which is also like a little neat you get to trash one film card from your hand give it to one rest it down to one of your leaders or characters so um basically like if you give it to leader you're just discarding a card in order to use your leader's ability for free um not too crazy i think it's more crazier than it's another blocker uh maybe there's a use case of this i'm missing which if i am please let me know uh but i don't know i'm not sure if this effect is that crazy i guess you, you just get to filter your hand right let's say you have like uh you have like a bunch of uncounterables in your hand right like you have too many musics or whatever you can just discard one bam attach the leader swing maybe draw into counter or something so uh, i guess that's a decent use case uh and then lastly we have this monkey d luffy here which is it's just it's pretty much just a 2k counter for the most part but um, i guess the extra 1k is decent like two cost 4k next up doppelmigo so this is probably by far the best starter of all of the six if you guys uh shout out kai he just put a guide out on the patreon for doppelmigo yesterday so if you guys haven't checked that out definitely check that out but this is definitely the best starter like out of the six it's so insane matter of fact that doppelmigo's like jumping to the top of the meta and you guys might be thinking like yo did a starter deck really make doflamingo this broken and it really did like all of these cards are just nuts so first thing first we have boa hancock this card is absolutely insane look at three cards from the top of your deck place them at the top or bottom then give up to one rested on to your leader right so if we look at this leader again we need a total of three dawn in order to uh play a warlord rested right so now it's like Going second, in order to play two units on back-to-back -back turns, you'd have to have Jinbei, right? Like, let's say we're going second, four down turn, play Jinbei. On our sixth down turn, if we weren't playing Jinbei, we're not really calling two units. Unless, I don't know, maybe if we play like a three-cost Doflamingo or something. But now, on our sixth down turn, we can actually play this Boa Hancock, right? You play the four down, you attach it on to leader, and then you still have two down left over. So you just attach it on, and then you rest the last down for leader to go bam so now we can play jimbei on four dawn and we can play two units out on six dawn so that alone just makes this card so so insane it's also a blocker and it's a 6k stat like it, re it really just does everything man like this card really turned the deck up and i think it's going to make this deck even stronger into like by luffy and stuff because that 6k base stat is just so so strong while setting up our deck and obviously just being able to look at the top of our deck if our if the top of our deck is mid we can just bottom deck it in case we're digging for like a gravity blade or a pudding or something like that so it's just very neat all around another really salt broken card here is law man this card is just so nuts so you get to return one of our own characters to our hand to return one of our opponent's characters and this is card is, this is going to be absolutely nuts because now we can bounce Corona and Sengoku. So Corona is the card that uh you basically uh check top five in your ranges. So we'll be able to bounce Perona back to our hand. So even though Perona just checks top five, like it's unlike other searchers, uh where we it doesn't replace itself, right? Like we're not searching a card from our deck, adding it back to our hand. Now we can actually just bounce it back to our hand. We can potentially use it again in the future, or we just get the counter value back. And we're bouncing one of our opponent's four costs. So this card is absolutely insane. And this card is also just going to be crazy in mirror matches as well for kind of messing up our opponent's board while establishing our own board. And I feel like this is just so strong, man. Just being able, because like this deck is now calling like two to three units like a turn. Like you can have some crazy turns with this deck. So to be able to bounce an opponent's board while doing that really is nuts. And it is restricted to seven Warlords of the Sea, which was probably a wise decision i might have been i would have been coping on something in rebecca or something so yeah that probably is a wise decision but um yeah that's that's just fire and then we bro we just got to keep it going man this crocodile is also insane so i'm not going to speak too much on this it's just reveal the top card if it's seven warlords you get to draw two and place one card from your hand at the top of the deck so uh this is very very neat you basically just get to uh plus one essentially you get the body you get the draw and you get to stack your deck so just very neat card and then we also have this buggy which is a 2k version of perona this means we can have like eight peronas in total right like we're playing these peronas we're playing this buggy like that's just so insane man like a 2k that also stacks the deck this is also going to be making going first uh that much more broken as this deck because now we're going to be able to consistently pull off our leader ability going first uh blue didn't really have many good options to going first before because like the other option that would stack our deck is this doflamingo here and this doflamingo lacks counter so it just like it just it just wasn't it man so just having that in a form of a 2k counter uh is certainly going to be huge and bro like all of the cards in this starter are crit yo i think this deck plays all of the cards because we also got to talk about this last card to teach 
Peach is also going to be an insane card. If you can't remove this card, you're going to get boot. Like, you're just going to get blasted by it. Pause. Like, I, y'all heard the, the, yeah, just pause, pause. But, like, it's insane, man. Like, activate main. You may place one card from your hand at the top of your deck. Give up to two rested dots, one of your leaders or characters. So, this card, if it's six, is just going to be so, so insane. Like, just imagine the late game, like, Bam, like you play like a Jinbei or something. Use four down to play Jinbei. Now you're attaching two down to your leader. And now you can uh rest it on to play a unit. Now you have five extra down to work with. And at this point, you've already played three units, right? Because we played a Jinbei. Jinbei played something. We're using our leader ability for one Don. And we still have five Don to work with. Like I'm telling you, we just get in some crazy, crazy board states. And this card is also neat because if we have like any, we can potentially like loop this, right? Like let's say um uh law for example right let's say we put law on the top of our deck uh we can uh we can attack play law bounce law to our hand and then we can just replay law again bounce like so we can just spam like if we have cards like this that can just return themselves to hand we can just spam abilities thanks to this martial d teach which is very very nice so this whole package is crazy this is probably why this is the craziest starter like all five of these new cards are just good like they're all just sick even this uh even this ultra leader uh, looks sick i know on tcg player yo they ran up the tax on that on that doflamingo man so uh this new one looking sick is kind of gas and now we have uh three more starters to look at so purple luffy started this is probably my second favorite starter if i had to tell you guys to pick up like two starters oh i don't but the black one is also close but i'd say definitely pick up doflamingo as I, I feel like you just have to pick this one up you basically have all the essentials in this deck like, this is all cards the deck are... Okay, they're not all cards the deck are running, but, like, there's a lot of cards in this that the deck will be running, and then we have all these good new cards. But I think second place would definitely go to either purple or black. So let's go ahead and look at it purple. So we got this seven-cost card, down minus one, play up to one purple straw hat from your hand with cost five or less. So this is going to be absolutely nuts because uh going the going first curve for purple Luffy is basically you go from one down to four down to seven down. So that means on turn three... We're playing a seven cost and a five cost. That's kind of nuts, right? Like that's 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 pretty nuts. It's pretty insane. So I think this straw hat package is going to be uh very uh very strong just for like expanding the board very early. Um, this might make it. This might make this deck like just unusually good going first and maybe a bit more lackluster going second. Uh, I'm not entirely sure because I haven't fully tested it yet, but I do think it's very interesting. Um. I was told uh, in Discord by Jackson the other day that, yo, wait, hold off on this deck until OP09. But if y'all want to start coping it, fuck, like, yo, just start coping it, man. Because, like, this this package is pretty sick. So, this is, like, the main card here. We get to call another Straw Hat. But let's look at the actual new Straw Hats we can call. So, this one, you get to check top five and reveal up to one purple Straw Hat and add it to your hand. So, this is very nice. Just I'll play uh, Searcher. So, this can go ahead and search for our... Uh, luffy taro and as i said the curve going first is one four seven so this is basically an excellent four down play it's a 6k body and it can prepare us for that seven down turn by grabbing the luffy taro uh this sen sen goro that's shit i don't i don't know if i said that right but the sen goro is also going to be very very nice because we're going to be able to get some actual card advantage uh which is very nice because i think purple luffy i, I think it kind of lacks a bit in card advantage compared to other decks i mean i guess queen is quite nice you don't typically play Rages and stuff, so I guess having both Sangoro and Queen, or I don't know, just just having something that can repeatedly draw one on Swig is going to be very very nice. And obviously, this can be called off the Seven Cost Luffy. Uh, oh no, I'm pretty sure this card's mid because I haven't even like seen this one. If you have Eight or more Dawn, trash one card in and draw two cards. Okay, so not too bad. It's like an, it's like another Queen. Um, I guess like. Queen, it costs one more, but Queen is also a 6k body, right? But I mean, I guess this is searchable off of uh, Zoro Drew and it fixes the whole straw hat package. So I don't know if they'll actually play this, but this card is a little neat. And then this is a card I saw watching a YouTube video, actually. This card is going to be uh, very, very nuts. Being able to rest up five cost less is just going to be very, very strong, especially against BY Luffy. Like, it just expands your options against BY Luffy. Like, let's say you attack BY Luffy and you like, you bait them to counter whatever, like, bam, they got a counter. Now you can, like, rest their five cost Luffy and attack into it and stuff. So uh, this is just going to be a neat card for just dealing with cards on the board. Even dealing with annoying cards like Kuzan, like, just being able to rest them down and attack into it is going to be very, very nice. Um, but I think the starter is going to be clean. And if you've already looked at some of the OPO9 results, Purple Luffy is obviously doing uh, pretty well. And I think that's really thanks to this Luffy, uh, this Luffy Taro card. So definitely grab this Purple Luffy starter deck if you're a fan of Purple. Next up, black. Um, 
Yeah, so as I said before clicking on this, like these are probably the starter decks I'm second most excited for. And I think this black starter deck really just is insane, man. So like this is probably my favorite. I don't know, there's so many good cards, but this is one of my favorites of R.I.P. Sakazuki. Cause like, yo, if Sakazuki had this, oh my god, man. So this card is a you may trash two black navies from your hand. If your leader has the navy type, draw three cards. Yo, that's just cr yo, that would have been so insane in Sakazuki, right? So now we can filter these two navy cards out of our hand and filter three cards. So that's gonna be insane, especially for unsearchable cards like Moria and stuff like that. We're gonna be able to see it more consistently than other black decks, which is very nice. Do so keep in mind that this is Navy Leader Locked, so the dreams of Navy Lucci are dead. But hey, shout out, shout out Smoker, because yo, we're getting lit. So some of these other cards are also really nice. So Tashigi is also very, very nice. This is like Six cost Brook if it was like 10 times more efficient, right? So this card's five cost. It's 6k power, like 6k Brook, but it also has counter. And if you're a leader smoker, you get to give a card minus four cost. And then if this character was played on this turn, you get to actually trash your opponent's character, which is very, very nice. This will also be pretty strong against Marshall D. Teach next set, which like nullifies people's abilities and stuff like that. Sorry if I spoiled. I didn't say too much about the effects, so sorry if I spoiled, but um... Yeah, this is going to be quite nice. And Smoker Leader ability actually does minus one, uh, two characters. So this you can straight up just trash a five cost Luffy that's under Sabo protection with this, or you can just trash a Sabo and go at your opponent's face. Pause. So this is it's just, it's just you know it's pretty nice. I think it's, it's very nice to have like a an in house card that just like trashes an opponent's character like that. Like I feel like it's just going to be very strong against decks like Black Yellow Luffy that get around the whole destruction uh, mechanic. You know, this isn't a card that I've really, it's not a card that I've really been seeing like crazy in lists yet, but I think this card's going to be absolutely crazy in Black Mirrors. Like, if there's any reason, like, Smoker starts, like, winning the Black Mirror or whatever, it would be thanks to a card like Hina. So this card, when it has a Don attached to it, becomes a total of eight costs on your opponent's turn. And this is going to be extremely, extremely annoying to deal with. It's also worth noting that this Hina card it is going to be very, very strong uh, in the Moria deck. Because on your sixth on turn as Moria, you are going to be able to play uh, two units out. Uh, and if you do manage to get the down on this, it will be a cost, which will be strong in Black Mirrors. But I don't know. I think Moria is just kind of mid right now. Like, I think I said in uh, one of my videos, like my more recent videos, I said that Don Flamingo was worse Moria. At this point, I think Moria is just worse Don Flamingo. Like, Don Flamingo is just too insane. I like going wide and stuff like that. So um, I am, yeah, I'm just. I'm not too worried about this card in Moria because I'm not too worried as Moria as a deck right now, but I do think this card is quite neat in, uh, in Smoker. And it can just get us like some extra Dawn in order to aggro down like a BY Luffy and stuff like that. As for the other two cards, they're kind of whatever. Like this card is just a three cost blocker. You may place one card from your trash at bottom. Give minus one cost. It's honestly, it's mostly whatever. And then I think this card's kind of whatever too. You may trash a Navy card. Two of your opponent's characters with cost four less can't attack. Like, all right, cool. It's neat, but it's. It's nothing crazy. Maybe it gets crazier in the future. Uh, maybe it's just better in a different leader, but I'm not too gas on either of these cards. But I do think all three of these cards are pretty insane. So if we look at the Doflamigos starter deck, we had uh, five good cards. This deck, we have three good cards. And in this deck, I think we also... Oh, okay, we have four good cards. So I guess that's just how we'll rank it. We'll say Doflamigo is the best right now. Uh, Purple Luffy second best because, you know, we got four good cards. Even this Onami is, like, kind of decent. The 2k sat is just kind of mid, and then this deck does have uh three good cards, uh, which is neat. And then I think, yeah, this this earlier, yo, this was that actually one good card, and then this one had this one actually had a few good cards. It's just that red is mid. So I'm still gonna give this a worse starter deck because red is just kind of like mid right now. But for the last starter deck, yellow, so I had to I had to give all my rankings because you know, like I had to give all my rankings first before we looked at yellow. So I'm gonna be honest. And I'm okay. I know a lot of people think I'd be like, they think I'd be baiting with Katakuri and stuff like that. But yo, y'all gotta look at this for a second, man. This this starter deck is kind of neat. So we got a new 2k counter, right? This 2k counter allows us to stack our or our opponent's life, and then we get to add this card to our hand afterwards. So this is nice. We just get to sack even harder as Katakuri. We get to uh, stack our life, and then we get to uh, add this to our hand, which is nice, right? So we're getting the 2k while getting. Uh, an extra peek at our life that we probably shouldn't have, so it's just going to lead to more triggers and stuff like that. Or worst case scenario, if our uh, life is already stacked, we can mess around with the opponent's life, which is pretty neat. So I feel like this is just a nice, like, quality of life 2K to have. That's just what we'll call it, quality of life 2K. Um, 
This card is actually really, really deep. So I don't think I saw it in any yellow decks. And it's probably because Doflamingo is the most popular deck right now. And you probably just get clowned by Doflamingo playing like a counterless card like this. But I do think this card is quite neat. So it's, you may trash one card from your hand. Your opponent trashes two cards from their hand. Uh, or they trash one card from their life. So I actually think... I'm not even thinking about Katakuri. I'm actually thinking about putting with this. I think this uh, card would actually be extremely, extremely neat in putting. So... Uh, going first, on your 3 down turn, you ramp to 4 down, right? Which means on your third turn, you'd have 6 down. And I feel like this is such an insane 6 down play to have, man. Like, forcing your opponent to already trash a life or discard 2 cards from your 6 down turn is nuts. Like, I, I genuinely want to test this card out, and I want to see, like, how it does into the field. Like, you pro Pudding probably just gets cooked by Doflamingo, right? Like, Doflamingo is just going too wide. Like, put I don't know. Pudding is probably just getting cooked realistically but i do think this card could genuinely be decent across the board like really having to make this decision to either trash two cards or trash a uh, one life is pretty nuts and if you play this like back to back like you play this on your sixth down turn uh and you play it on your eighth down turn i do think things can get out of hand really fast so obviously we're also losing two cards from our hand because we're playing this six house and discard in the card but like it's we're not even really losing two cards because we just played a 7k body and we played it a turn earlier than like we should be allowed to right so this is personally my favorite card out of the starter deck, even though I haven't seen it in any deck list yet. Really, I really want to try it in the pudding deck, man. I think it would be really, really neat. Um, as for the rest of this stuff, it's kind of mid. Like, this one is, like, you may add one card from the top of your hand so to one of your Big Mom Pirates uh, as active. So, I think this is just a meme card, because realistically, like, you're probably just comboing this with, like, Zeus or Prometheus. So, right, I believe? Uh, now you just give one card banish. So, I guess you could give two cards banish, like... Yeah, I don't know. You could give two cards double attack. Like, I, I don't know, bro. It's like, honestly, it's like kind of mid. Is this even, yeah, I, it's it's kind of mid, bro. Maybe it's for something else. Maybe I'm tripping. Maybe swing 13 twice with the Peril Sparrow or something like that. I, I don't know, man. It's not really. Am I hating? I'm trying to think because this card really just isn't my cup of tea. It might, I don't know. Maybe it's better in the Katakuri deck than I think. And you can just go for like, crazy like lethals or something like that i guess this is a card that i really need to uh examine more because i haven't looked too much at the bit like if it said four costs that would be so lit i just feel like the three cost options right now are just a little bit but let me know in the comments below if there's a card that i'm forgetting about that like just gains a bunch of power or something like that at three costs because i would genuinely like to know because i'm genuinely curious and i guess you could play multiple of these to restand like that one like uh peril sparrow multiple times so i guess that's like kind of neat but i don't know sorry my alarm's going off and then this next card charlotte cracker uh kind of neat against black decks i guess if you it would be ko to get to trash a life but also i don't know if trashing a life against black is the best thing especially now that uh yellow has lost access to reject it's very easy for black to just rebecca sob one stay alive so i'm not really sure about that and then the last card here uh is the charlotte category which uh, it's pretty like pretty decent card. It's a blocker, and you get to get category ability on curve. I'm not sure if this is a card that I've really seen in category decks. I think it's kind of decent, uh, but not having trigger and stuff like that might be holding it back. I don't know. Ultimately, not the greatest fan of the starter deck. I I do think we got some really nice cards. Though. I think this card will probably just be in every Big Mom Pirates deck from now on, and I really want to test this card in pudding. But anyways, let's go ahead and debrief. So that is it for my starter video. Um, I kind of said it like randomly through the video, but basically my favorite starter by far was the Doflamingo starter deck. Uh, I was kind of tied between uh the purple and the black starter deck as my second to third because like purple just had a bunch of good cards just like the Doflamingo starter deck, but black having that discard two navy and draw three is just so, so insane. But those are definitely my top three by far. Definitely uh the blue, the black, and the purple. Let me know what your guys' top three starter decks are. Um, I'm really gassed to finally get these here. Yo, we really need that meta change, man. So I'm really excited. And yeah, just let me know what y'all's thoughts are. And with that being said, I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.